The New York Knicks are nothing without Jalen Brunson. Watching that second quarter, I couldn't stand it. Get Brunson back. That's all I cared about. I don't care what's going on here with the run from the Pacers or what the Knicks are doing. Get Brunson back in because without him, the Knicks are nothing. Jalen Brunson showed you again his importance yesterday, and of course he comes back in the game and everything changes. But man, I know that they've withstood a bunch of injuries, but the New York Knicks, without Jalen Brunson on the floor, I don't care if it's a quarter, I don't care if it's three minutes, it is ugly without Jalen Brunson. The level of disrespect that you're showing to these guys right now is ridiculous. It is it is unfair, and it is not even close to being true. Think about the teams, and they didn't win for us, and, and we love them. We know the 90s, right? Greg Anthony, Hubert Davis, Herb Williams, Anthony Bottom. Talk about the role players. All due respect to those guys who played hard and were in the middle of a lot of good moments. If Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, and Hartenstein played with Patrick and Mace, the guys I just mentioned wouldn't play. Like the role players that, that – I'm not even talking about OG because right. he's obviously beyond a role player. The players that the Knicks have – Outside of Jalen Brunson, are the best are, are the best like you know I don't even want to say role players because right. geez their stats like it's seven points and three rebounds but their secondary players destroy what the Knicks have trotted out I believe outside of anybody but the championship teams find the Knicks team that trotted out somebody like Josh Hart you know. DiVincenzo again last night was muddy, and I know I listen, I know what you mean. Like, what, what Jalen's out, it feels ominous. You're like, oh, my God. They've got nothing outside well, but, of him. But that's not true. They, so, it is. Look at what the Pacers did without him on the floor. They, like, what, you can't rely on Sam, one Sam, think guy. about this, though. I get that, but they didn't. Jalen Brunson played 16 minutes fewer than he usually right. plays, right? So he sat right. for 16 minutes. 16 minutes he did not play. The Knicks still scored a buck 30. They shot... 57% overall. They've shot 46% from three. They took, I don't know, 20-something free throws hit 83%, and they had single-digit turnovers. Like, you make it say, and I know that they had a big lead, mm -hmm. and I know that it immediately, dis right. immediately dissipated Brunson when Jalen got hurt. In, it gets and then better, it, yeah. it comes back in. It gets restored. Understood. But show some respect to these guys. I, I can't. I, I, well, well, then you're missing a well, good party, man. This is uh, ridiculous. Good party, Josh right? Hart. It, it, you're not going to show Josh Hart respect. You can't. Sir, yeah, he gets respect to a certain degree. You can't survive Dude, without Jalen Brunson. You said they're nothing without uh, Jalen Brunson. They're not. The New oh York my Knicks, God. The New York Knicks oh as a team. Oh, my God. The New York Knicks as a team are nothing oh. without Jalen Brunson. If Brunson didn't score 40 every game in the Sixers series, they would have lost that one. Yeah, he didn't score 40 and, last night. And, they yeah. won. Yeah, well, because the Pacers stink. So, so now it's the Pacers stink. Yeah, so the Sixers were banged the way, the up. Pacers, the Pacers stink. I mean, well, well, we just keep Brunson, kicking this down the road. Well, without Brunson, how'd the Knicks look against the Pacers? The game was getting out of control without Jalen Brunson. Did they win the game? Yeah, because Brunson came back yeah, in. Yeah, but hold yeah. on a sec, Sal. When you go back, that's why I was... Do you I, think I'm, they would have won that game if Brunson didn't come back in? I, no, 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 no. But, that that's, team but, but that's not what you said. So Josh Hart that's has not what some heart and toughness. He's, they, but that's like, not what you said. Yeah. Like, if you would have said that's the third Yeah, they're well, nothing oh, I mean, without well, Brunson. That's very different than saying without those guys, they wouldn't have won the game. Right. I, I don't think I'd react the way I'm reacting. Like, it's because you're probably right. But here's the thing. Like, when, when Jalen Brunson checked back into that game and you saw him shoot the free throws at half, time and we weren't sure if he was going to make it back like he was very reluctant to get involved in the action he sat in the corner he gave up the boy couldn't get past anybody usually that yo-yo forward backside mm -hmm. boom spin by the footwork sublime he didn't have it because he didn't trust his foot at that point and i know what you're saying sal of course there's a correct a, a direct correlation brunson came back the knicks went on a run the knicks won the knicks were up two zip but early on when they were chipping away at that deficit it wasn't jalen brunson it was dante divincenzo it was Josh Hart. It was Isaiah Hartenstein. Come on. Well, without him, they were not, to me, not worth watching. They were playing a horrible game. And by the way, it just speaks to where they're at. They're not built like this. They're ravaged by injury. It's why I said coming into the postseason that they needed Julius Randle. It is quite obvious to me without Brunson, and we haven't seen it until last night for an extended period. My God. Yet yeah, these guys play hard. They play tough. They're physical. They're nowhere near good enough to win without him going nuts, whether that's him being in the the entire game, whether the Tim's scoring 40 points, that's right now how they're built. And there's no way that that is sustainable to rely on one guy so heavily, even at home, even against a less than Pacers team. There's not the Sixers, certainly not the Celtics. The Pacers aren't any good. If they were, they would have won one of these two games. Well, the Pacers are soft. Yeah, and well. They are absolutely soft. I mean, Halliburton finally decided to shoot. Miles Turner wants to live 25 feet away from the rim. You know, Siakam was invisible for 80% of the game. Then he popped in for a minute. They're soft. Right. And, uh, listen. There's a lot of things to unpack here. The Knicks are getting a lot of friendly whistles. Let's not obscure that. You got to keep it real. But 
as you unpack the game, and while I, I, your, I, I couldn't disagree yeah. more, I, I, it's your opinion, so I, I, you know, I, I got it. You know what my takeaway was? Honestly, and I tweeted this last night. I don't tweet much after games. Last night I was in a tweet mood because it was a I mean, right. we could have we gotten the news, and I, mean, I guess we still can. Jalen Brunson, stress fracture, out for the playoffs. Like, there was Disaster. a moment where everything was on the table, dude. Right. Like, you don't see a star player, any player, disappear you know, 50 minutes of real time. Where is he? No one, no one even knew. The broadcasters, no one had an idea. The side, whatever the um, the side reporter's name is, that guy, nobody knew. But my takeaway was, after that game, I, and I tweeted this, I sat there, I said, man, I, I can't respect a team more that I respect the, the, these New York Knicks, which is why I'm pushing back hard on what you just said about the non-Brunson players. Well, these maybe- guys deserve everybody's respect. Maybe I would have felt like that had they won without him. Now, luckily, they didn't have to. We didn't have to see that because once he came back in the game, everything changed as predicted. Like, you could see, one. okay, thank God, Brunson's back out there. He's healthy. They're going to be fine. They didn't win without him. They were getting beat without him. Then he comes back, and they win the game. So, to me, the group that everybody loves, and I understand why we love them. I love it, too. The rebounding, the hearts, also, although their defense has been an abomination in this series for the majority of the series. First two halves of each game, yeah. they, they don't play any defense. They can't stop McConnell. Uh, uh, well, in I mean, that's, one, that's one part game. of it. How about guard somebody from three? I mean, they're just saying, basically standing there watching the Pacers shoot threes. Oh, and by the way, the Knicks, the rebounding machine, maybe they do miss Mitchell Robinson because they're not rebounding the ball as well as they were they in the were, first They series. were plus 12 last night. Yeah, again, you're looking at the numbers. I'm, that's I'm, that's I'm, I'm right. watching the game that I'm yeah. looking at the numbers Watch just to validate many, what I saw. How many times the Knicks are getting second chance? Sal, they were plus they, 12. Yeah, plus 12 that, is plus 12. That's great. They're getting the, the way the rebounds were going in the first round series, they were getting second and third chances regularly. The Sixers are going one and done. That's not the case now where they're giving the Pacers multiple opportunities on the offensive board, and the Knicks at times are going one and done. So they also have picked it up in the second half of each of these games. First half, no defense, no rebounding. But to me, I come away from that game obviously feeling good that the Knicks won, but the number one thing is, God, this team's got enough. It's not even their fault because they're missing their second best player. Yeah. They're missing Mitchell Robinson. Well, they're now they're missing their. their you're talking about uh, Randall as we'll the second best, we'll, or we'll get to yeah. OG later. All right, fair enough. And and aside from from just just flat out respecting the hell out of this team, you know what I take away? Like I I, I think we're missing the mark a little bit too. Like all right, well you know Brunson goes down. And they're getting waxed, they, and then he comes back, and Brunson has influence in the Knicks' win. So I understand the, the connection, like, without Brunson, that they, they don't have a ton. But I would also say that if Brunson didn't have these guys, like, with, with, their, with their soul and their heart, I'm not even sure that Brunson would have been able to be Brunson this season. Like, the guys around him allow him to be him, and when it's time for the other dudes to step up, jeez, I mean, Greg Anthony shot 38, you know, 38% from the floor. Oh, those 90s Knicks teams, they were awesome, phenomenal. Hubert Davis couldn't play defense. Herb Williams was a step. Anthony Bonner stunk. I mean, show some respect. This bench and the the, the rest of the starting five is awesome. I love Love, love this Knicks team. Now, I'll get to the Celtics later. Yeah. This series, this team, I love these guys. BT and Sal on the fan or friends of Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Steve is in Westport, Connecticut. Steve? Uh, hey, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. Listen, um, I, I just turned 60, so I've had the benefit of, although I was very young at the time, watching the Knicks in, in 69, 70, and 73. I think mean, the first time since then, even in 94, where I love these guys. I completely agree with you 100%. But I think it's a little, my takeaway is a little bit of both of what you're saying. Number one, on Brunson, last night demonstrates why he really is worthy of MVP consideration. Because when he was on the floor, he's the general. The guys defer to him. He's the captain. Um, and the ball does not move when he's out of the game. Um, DiVincenzo, these guys rebounds, offensive rebounds, they hustle, they dive, but they're kind of looking around like, where's our leader? He's not on the court. And when he was not in the game, there was, it was like, I agree with, I guess with Sal, that was saying, it all just didn't move. It just didn't seem the same. Sure, at the end of the, they won the game. You know, you look at the game stats, they were great. But last night, it wasn't like Brunson was in the game the whole time and say they won because of Brunson. You can actually see the difference between when he's on the court and not on the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh, if he yeah. was not on the court, 
they would have no chance. They would never be in the playoffs. Yeah, playoff. I understand they, that. What if Michael Jordan wasn't on the court? I, come on. Well, I mean, man. they did Scotty and, you know. I mean, I, I, well, okay, they had Scotty and they had Ku Coach later on. Yeah. They would, they, how many championships did they have? None. Without Michael Jordan, they don't even get to the conference finals, dude. I mean, Kevin McHale was amazing. Is he at that amazing without Larry Bird, you know, commanding double teams? I mean, I don't know. I really don't. You know, James Worthy was great. Is he that great if Magic's not filled him, you know, with, with no, fast breaks? I, I don't know. But if Brunson was out and they had Julius Randle, who you know I'm a big Randle fan. I know you like Randle too, but you've been saying that you don't think the Knicks miss Julius Randle in this postseason. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, that would make a huge difference. Oh, uh, you know what? It sucks Brunson's out. We don't know what the hell's going on. At least they have another go-to guy. I'll give Adenobi a ton of credit because before he got hurt, he was knocking down big three after big three, keeping them in the game. Like, I like the threes. I don't care if you're up five and you miss a three. When you're down five and you hit the three, that to me is a big three player. Nah, that's, and a good, that's, that's always a good shot yeah, as a fan. You're he, like, all right, here we go. Keep us in it. And oh, and Adenobi kept doing that last night. Yeah. But without Brunson, BT, and we saw it in the regular season too when he would go down or have to sit out. God, they, they, they just, it's not their fault. It's not criticizing the Knicks. But without Jalen Brunson, they're nothing. I don't think they would have been able to beat the Pacers without Jalen Brunson last night. It does speak to how he should be an MVP. The fact that he got only, uh, you know, whatever, fifth place in the MVP voting is ridiculous. You saw the difference in one game last night? Uh, well, I'll, I'll admit this. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. They, 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 I don't think they would have won if Jalen doesn't come back. Okay. But that's very different from, you know, you know how we view the other guys. Two, two different things. Uh, I, there was, I almost don't want to admit this, There was a, because it's such like a weak loser thought. There was a part of me last night, I'm like, I don't know. Would it benefit the Knicks to just, hey, Jalen, take the night off. We'll see you game three. Like, I, I was almost thinking that because I, I didn't know. And I didn't think it was the nut shot. I mean, well, I mean, I think initially I thought it was the nut yeah, shot. Yeah, but not keeping him out for an entire no, quarter. Unless, God forbid, like, yeah. the testicle. Like, so, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, crude no, here. I but, know, like, that has happened to certain, you know, certain players. Um, oof. I mean, that's, that's a painful <laughs> but like, There's I, one thing we could agree on there. Nobody wants to deal with that. The, you know? the, the testicular explosion? God forbid. Oh, Jesus. Come on, man. I mean, it's happened. Yeah. But I think Boom was saying this morning that it happened. One of the guys that uh, the, oh. in the bike tour last year. Anyway, I was oh, it wrestling in my mind for a moment. Is it the smart thing to do just to just to make sure that you win the series or give yourself the best chance to win the series to just put them on ice the rest of the night? Oh, and 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 you know roll the dice on a winner or a loss and theoretically have them come back fresh game three on the road. Now they didn't do that. It worked out. They won. I don't know what the residual damage is going to be. I'm still worried about Jalen Brunson. It's not like um a, 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 a like a knee to knee, a little bone contusion, like the the foot. I mean, you start thinking Lynn's Frank. You start thinking stress fracture. I, you, it's not a sprained ankle, so it's got to be something with, you know, like joint or or, or tissue. I, it just, it's. It, I'm still worried about his foot. He, the one thing though, he did after to your point that he looked passive. Once he got into that little scrap with McConnell, yeah. that scrub, and I'd like to see the Knicks somebody scrub it. Oh my God, can somebody uh, stop this guy? You're gonna man. get beat by McConnell. He fit right Keep in with him us. out of the paint. He'd fit right in with us. Come oh, on to the guard, you guys McConnell. Me nuts, I love him. Well, after he got into it with him a little bit, you could see Brunson turn it up and bit. then really start to you know plant that little foot. Bit. Yeah, push little bit. Up and all that. All right, Jerry's in Manhattan. What's up, Jerry? Hey guys, how you guys doing? Hey, what's up, Jerry? What's happening? Hey, I, I think Sal, you lost um, today with your comments. They missed Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson hasn't done nothing since the first game of the Sixers series, getting three rebounds, averaging more fouls and points. And with Harstein passing the cuts and all that, mm -hmm. they definitely don't miss him. And yeah, also, you're right. They don't uh, miss Mitchell Robinson at all, right? Yeah, they don't. They yeah, really yeah. Don't. You don't. You don't think Mitchell Robinson will make a difference with TJ? Three, he's averaging. Stop uh, he's averaging looking at the stats, points. Jerry. Stop looking yes. at the stats and so, watch the game. We, you. Okay, who do you go think? Go well, hold point. on a second, Jerry. Go, you're you're a basketball expert, apparently. So educate us. Who's the Knicks' best rim protector? You know, like in the paint, defensive. Who is it? Okay. Who is it? It's Robinson. Okay, getting, and how does T.J. McConnell look? Little T.J. McConnell. How has he looked in the paint without Mitchell Robinson there? It's not because of Mitchell Robinson. Oh, oh no, it's out. not. Get lost, Jerry. I mean, give me a break. Look, you can say that you don't think Mitch is crucial to this series, as we both have. The matchups, Although I, yeah, I will say after, stuff, yeah. Yeah, I will say after watching again game two, I, I do think they miss him. Now, they don't miss him on the perimeter because he's not that type of defender. Mm -hmm. But, by the way, nobody on the Knicks is defending the perimeter well. Specifically in the, the first half. pretty good at that. Specifically in the first half of each of these games. 
First half of each of these games, guys are shooting threes wide open. Yeah. And even Preston Chachua, who, you know, again, I, I wanted to see him more on Siakam. Yeah, he's not as good as Mitch. It's simple as that. Mitch at his peak when healthy is an elite rim protector and an elite yeah, rebounder. Nobody's, no, I mean, nobody's debating that. Well, this guy's saying they well, don't miss him at all. Like, well, that's me where you, you could you know, maybe snuff out McConnell at that point. Yeah, I mean, Mitch, well, just having, 7-1, McConnell's you, what, 6-2? You think, McConnell, you think McConnell would have the same presence in the paint no, no, he's Mitch not there? No, no, he's not dancing freely in the paint. I agree with that. That's just one little that. point. So don't say that, like, the Knicks don't miss Mitchell Robinson. Now, to say that they can win this series without him, yeah, yeah. agreed. We said that yesterday or two days ago, whatever it was. That's a different story. Oh, my goodness. You can't say that they don't miss him. Like, all right, well, they don't miss Bogdanovich. They don't miss <laughs> Mitch. They don't miss Randall. Yeah, they don't miss so anybody. So far, they don't. Yeah. They keep winning. Yeah. I mean, but, I, yeah, but, I know what lurks. Yeah, well. That's going to be different. Come up and Just enjoy coming. this, please. Yeah, I, I know. Just enjoy this. I'm trying this. to. Zach is calling from Rockwell Center. Worry about the Celtics up, later. Zach? That's going to be tough. Now, <laughs> yeah. go home, go in your closet, and put your doink costume back on because all you've been oh, doing boy. this entire postseason is trashing the Knicks. That's not true. What a revelation. Zach, Zach, People that's not true. They're the best player, and they're not as good. Like, and it's not, it's not even the fact that it's, that it's Jalen Brunson. It's their point guard. It's the quarterback of the offense. They're already depleted. And all you've done is trash this team. It's not, it's that's not, not a good that's point, not true at all. Sal, it's not... that you take away the best player and they're not as good. Yeah, no, no, no. I How didn't say they're not as good. Jack, Zach, Zach, clean out your ears because I'm going to say this for you clearly. I didn't say they're not as good. I said the Knicks are nothing without Jalen Brunson. Now you go back in your closet. <laughs> Get out of here. One thing oh, I will not tolerate God. is the Nick unabashed fanboy. Here's the thing. Nick fans, you don't want to hear this? Get your brooms out. Because if the Knicks do advance, and I believe they will in five games, yeah. they're getting swept by the Celtics. I'll worry about that That's going to be the there. comeuppance. I mean, they're going to get swept and beat to a pulp, and the Knicks fans are going to crawl back in their corner. Oh, I thought this team was better. I've been saying from the beginning they missed Julius Randle. You're going to wish you had Julius Randle healthy. By the way, BT, it's not even a knock on the Knicks. Like, they have no chance because they're depleted. We'll get to OG in a minute. Uh, Knicks fans, enjoy this run. You're talking about championship. You're talking about going far. Enjoy this because this is it. Well, Beating the Pacers is going to be the high point of the next season. I got a little news for you, and I know who your boy is. That will be John Starks, who's at yeah. every game. And by the way, Stephon Marbury has suddenly well, inserted he himself. Again? He was there again. Uh, uh, and I love, replay. I love Starks, too. If Starks is on this team, he's going to be doing a lot of cheering because he's not going to be playing. That's right. how much That's how much better the guys on the court now are than John Starks. And if that, that offends the old heads, and I'm one of them, mm-hmm. tough. Because I'm, I'm, no, you talk about, like, the fandom and the fanboy. Right. Now, there's elements of that that seep into, but also being able to look at a player from an era that was very important to either you or others, and me as well, because we're basically the same age. We love those 90s Knicks. And, 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 and not... not Appreciate the progression uh, and the the more the more skill. Dante Divincenzo is simply more skilled than John Stocks. No, I don't think so. But he I is. totally disagree. I think they're similar. He's a better athlete. He's I got a better handle. Similar. He's a more consistent nah, shooter. No he, he is. Nah, He's I, a better passer. Yeah, in a different NBA where well, nobody's well, playing any defense. That, but I, I yeah. get that. No. Hey, by the this, way, nice nice shot by Divincenzo last night. The Knicks get a rebound under a minute to go, and this guy's chucking a three floater immediately. From no, the, no, uh, from on the three. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hold the ball, you knucklehead. That was a quick one. Yeah, that was a quick one. But listen, hold on. What we can't do here, we can do it, but we're going to call people out for doing it. And we're going to overly romanticize what those Knicks were. No, they would be back nothing in without the day. I'm with you. They'd be- I mean, but this is the same kind of character, and and I'm stunned that that you don't. I don't mean championship. They can't win the championship this year. They're not going to beat right. the Celtics. But to not appreciate it more than than I, I thought you would appreciate this more. Here's than why you do. I, I respect Josh Hart and DiVincenzo and the way the Knicks play. That has taken almost precedent over the greatness of Brunson. The New York Knicks, like back in the 90s, if you say, hey, you take Ewing off this team, the Knicks would be nothing. And that would be accurate, yep. right? The Knicks would be nothing Terrible. without Ewing. But it was always about Ewing. It wasn't about, oh, look at the heart that they've shown and the toughness. It was about Ewing first and foremost. Now it's become, oh, my God, look at these role players. These guys are great and they're deep and they're hard and they play so tough. Yeah, that's great. That can only take you so far. Without Without Jalen Brunson dropping 40 every night, which he has done when healthy, yeah. without Brunson coming back from an injury last night, whatever it may be, how severe it may be, being the hero, this this Knicks team, the little engine that could Knicks, they're nothing. I can't prove this, okay? But, you know, Patrick seeped into it again, role players, supporting yeah. cast. Patrick Ewing 
let's say Pat in, in his prime, mid-20s, 26, 27, like Jalen, goes down. And you're trying to win with the guys. We all know who they are. That team, minus Ewing, playing this team, minus Brunson, would get smoked. These guys would smoke those guys. Mm, smoke. I'm not so sure about that. Smoke show. BT and Sal on the fan. We'll come back on the other side. We'll get, got to get into OG and the injury and the impact that that mm. would have on this team. And maybe a reason for it. I mean, is it is there something to the minutes from Tibbs? We'll get to that. And your calls on the other side, 877-337-6666.